My name is Sarah Finn and I am a specialist audiologist. I work at Sunderland Royal Hospital and I've been there for the last eight years. Switching the hearing aids on, whether that's a child who's hearing for the first time in the paediatric service or an eight-year-old patient that's fought having a hearing loss for 15 years plus, turning those devices on and having them go, ooh, that's, wow, that's better than what it was before. That in itself is that instant gratification that what you're doing is making an active difference to somebody's life. The most common type of hearing problem that we see is the age-related general wear and tear type of hearing loss. But with that comes withdrawing from social interactions and conversations with people, isolation, loneliness, all of these other things can increase as a result of that person not being able to hear what the questions are or what the banter is or what the joke is. Um, so it has quite an impact on that overall person's well-being. The reason that I was attracted to audiology in the first place is that it is one of those things where you do an awful lot of the care process. You are assessing for a condition but then you're treating and you're managing it over a long-term lifetime of that person for care. So you get that continued relationship with the patients. You get to change their devices and upgrade them and see the improvement that you're making which is really nice. So much of um, audiology is communication based and is about forming that rapport and that relationship with the person opposite, which in NHS time constraints you have to do fairly quickly, that actually if you are just um, an intelligent person with no people skills, um, healthcare science isn't going to be the right choice for you. When you hit the door on that first placement, it's, it's the people, it's the conversation that you, you, you rely on most. You are part of a team, you can go to your colleagues with queries or questions and you can sort of have, have conversations about treatment plans for what would you do with this patient, what would you do in this instance. Um, but essentially you are working by yourself and you are responsible for the assessment that you're doing on that patient or the management plan that you're putting in place for that individual. I spend a lot of time doing direct referral assessments, um, which are GPs referring in for hearing test requests, um, the patient has been to their GP complaining that they're not hearing as well as they've used to, the GP is referred into audiology, we look in their ears, we do a hearing test, we say yes I'm afraid you have got the beginnings of age related general wear and tear to your hearing, would you like to try some hearing aids? So we take them through that and then we take them through the fitting appointment which is introducing them, often for the first time holding a hearing aid and then having to practice popping it in and out. Well, GCSE, I ended up doing um, the separate sciences um, and I, I picked RE and I picked history and I threw a language in there and did French just so it was wide enough, so it was enough spread because I hadn't fully made my mind up at that point as to what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted access to having the separate science to maybe potentially go down a, a healthcare science route. I actually found audiology through my sister and she was studying speech and language therapy and she lived with uh, another girl who was studying audiology and I sort of got chatting to this other girl and said oh that sounds interesting and so I then took that back had a look at some prospectuses and sort of narrowed down my search through that. Narrowing it down does have advantages as I had the advantage of having a degree in audiology knowing exactly the sort of job role I was going in for knowing exactly the level I was qualified at and that was quite comforting and reassuring to come out of university and end up with sort of a career trajectory. I was incredibly lucky, to be honest. I ended up getting a contract with the centre that trained me. So the hospital that I was originally a student at then employed me and I was offered a sort of a six month rollover contract and that allowed me time to shop around for a permanent job which was fantastic because I was then building up, I was newly qualified and I was building up my experience and developing my career while still hunting for a job. I didn't sort of have that, right this is the end of the course, now what? Placement gives you that work experience so that actually when you come out of the door, get your degree in hand, you are able to go straight into a job because you, you know what your patient interaction should be, you know what your appointment format is and you know essentially what you're doing. Yes, the hearing aid devices might be different or yes, the, the software system might be different, but you've got the skill set and you've practiced it at the workplace through placement, which is run throughout the entire course. 
So you've already got that sort of prior understanding and that confidence to do so. So it's not a massive jump to then jump into a place of work.